Hi all, welcome to today's Jenkins GSOC mentoring meeting for the Cloud Events plugin for Jenkins. It's August 2nd, I'm Cara Delamak, and we have Shruti and Jeff on the call right now. More will probably be joining, but Shruti is updating us on her work. Thank you, Cara. Um, so I thought to begin by maybe like taking a look at the, <laughs> at the POC, which is working for, well, at, at least the first part right now. Uh, and, and so it's, it's also for the Jenkins, it's running inside of my cluster, but we can, you know, in the future, try implementing an ingress for the broker. So it doesn't really work if it's like, if you're trying to reach it from outside of the cluster, you know, sending maybe a cloud event from uh, Postman or something, it doesn't work. It only is right now working for within the cluster, but we can obviously add a new um, ingress or something like that to make sure that it also works uh, outside of the cluster. So this is the broker URL for um, Knative, and it does have a trigger attached to it. And the trigger is filtering on cloud events um, attribute CE type. So here are some scripts, which I will be pushing out to, uh, to GitHub hopefully soon. Uh, so everyone can take a look at it. Okay, so this is, wait, this is the, this is Tekton trigger, which is a different thing. We wanna be looking at Knative trigger. <laughs> it's, it's actually been kind of fun just um, looking around different like tools and whatever it, the terminology that they've been using. Uh, so this is, yes, here it is. Um, we have the Knative uh, trigger, and this is the attribute type, which is so it's filtering on cloud event. And obviously, you, so the trigger is, uh, or, or I would say not the trigger, but the sync essentially, which is stuck on, uh, is outside of Knative event space. So that's why it's just the URI here. Otherwise, it would be a service if it was default as a part of Knative. Um, and this is just the default broker, which is an in-memory broker. So whenever we'd want to change that to, uh, let's say, Kafka or maybe RabbitMQ will just need some change in, in, in however this is being like written out alongside the, the channel implementation and the broker implementation. So this is just the default implementation right now. And again, this is the URL of the Knative broker, which has the trigger um, involved. Uh, and also taking a look back at the trigger itself is just filtering on queue enter and waiting. And so if I was to, I'm actually sending all so we can see which, like it only should have been triggered once, like the task one, which is associated with Tecton. Um, actually, you know, what we can also do is look through the entire flow. Uh, okay, so here we are. So this is the Tecton <laughs> trigger. Uh, so this is, there's so many things, I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the URI, of course, and this is the URI for the Tecton trigger or the, you know, like wherever Tecton is going to be listening. So like the Tecton event listener and Tecton event listener has the trigger inside of it. So uh, let's see here. I think I also have the events listener right here. Yes. So this is the, the URL that we were looking at for the broker or subscriber URI. So this is the CD event listener where all of the events from the broker for Knative will be routed to Tecton event listener. 
And then here we also can do trigger binding inside of Tecton. So I just wanted to sort of check if, you know, all of the metadata is coming in correctly, which is, but, but we're not really using it inside of any script. It's just a way to test and make sure that if, if we were to pass any parameters from Jenkins to Tecton to trigger a job or anything, it, it was working. Um, but I right now the script, I just change it to a simple, but it is working. You know, if you wanted to pass a parameter job name, you just have to maybe say like pass the, the arguments here. And uh, this is the trigger template, which is just using a simple task run of hello, hello world, hello, should be so that's basic. Okay. Going back, okay, we're also looking at the, the dash. We can also, you know, take a look at the CLI. I'll take a look at through the terminal. Let's take a look through the dashboard. So these were the ones that I was testing earlier. Those were triggered. So let's, okay, so let's trigger this now. I'm just making sure it doesn't have another, okay. So we should only see one new task run for the queue and third waiting inside of Tecton. Should we hear? Yes. Oh, second. It's working. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> so it really is only one again because it's like filtering, but then there's also another one, which is test two, which has a, a downstream configured. So if we were to build this, it would have like two different task runs since they're two different jobs of the type entered, like C type entered waiting. So we can also, yeah, so this one has just started. So there should have been, I guess, two more. Yes, there were two more. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the, the POC for now and the, the next thing that I, I have been trying to do is, so the CD, um, not, not CD, the, if we were to move from, let's say this simple like event format to like this simple HTTP protocol binding to Kafka protocol binding, we will just have to change a few things inside of the cloud events like however cloud events is written out. Um, so partition name, the, the key, whatever we are sending it to for um, the Kafka broker. So I've just been, I've been working on that and it seems to be working. I just need to make sure that in terms of the partition, it's sort of aligned with the broker that we have. It's just um, figuring that out at this point. Uh, and also there was another thing, which is testing with um, arguments. As I said earlier, I, I was able to do that, uh, you know, just by passing in the argument to hello job name to make sure that the arguments were passed in correctly. And the next big thing is obviously going to be creating the other part of the POC. So I, this week I was not able to work much inside of like Jenkins as a sync, like the um, the UI part of configuration that we've been talking, but I've been um, researching about event filtering options in Java and how we can, you know, like the last time we were talking, how we can implement it in a way which makes it easy to parse through the entire body of an event. But, but as Marisha said right now, um, I, if you're starting with like a simple use case, there might not really be a need because even if we are talking of Tecton or if you're talking of Knative Broker as well, it, they're mostly filtering on um, the header itself, you know, not the header, but the cloud events metadata rather than like the cloud events data as well. And the, the CEL, which they're using for um, like inside of like, okay, I can let's go back to the POC. Um, so the interceptor that they're using here, uh, and then, you know, they're doing the matching or the filtering based on the, like the CL interceptor and for body as well, like body.sh kept in contact. So I think it's over here since it's like a direct direct in the sense that they know that it's a connection with captain 
between captain and tacked on. So that's why like mentioning something like body.sh captain contacts is, is, um, is more viable here than it's going to be for us. Uh, so I think like right now I'm more focused on filtering again based on the header or the cloud events metadata. If we're talking about uh, like the structured or binary format of cloud events. And let me see if I can push the new changes on my And also I was wondering if or where should I post the script? So it's obviously open to open like for the community as well, if they want to see and create something similar. I would think that in the same repo, is there a place where you could put it that would make sense to, to be easy to find? Yeah, maybe like we can create a folder, um, which is uh, maybe I'm say POC inside of the cloud events plugin that we have. Yeah. yeah. Well, I still have the changes in my like local system, but again, like this week was more just trying and testing around with um, the POC itself, just to get an idea of how these different systems are working so we can implement something similar uh, inside of Jenkins. And again, the I think the one or two kind of main things which which are to be done inside of Jenkins is a sync. And I feel like now it would be ideal to implement that and I should start working on it is um, obviously like first when we have the filter, like with the filter coming in, um, giving options to trigger different kind of actions. So just that following of filter and then filter to action inside of Jenkins. And another thing is if, if, you know, so we have this system of Jenkins to Knative to Tecton, and it does, so for, for us, if you're talking of as a sync, um, it does take away, or even not even as a sync, but even as a source, it takes away that, that are like as our responsibility of making sure that the event is going to be received by the, by the receiver, you know, the, the retries and all of that stuff is figured out by Knative Broker. So again, I'm going back to the conversation of if this should be, you know, if this should be something that's included as part of a plugin and if so, how? Because if it's not, then again, I, I think that we might have to implement that system of a like resistant to network failures and all of that stuff inside of Jenkins, you know, maybe as a source or maybe Jenkins as a sync. Uh, I would like love to hear your guys' ideas on that. I think uh, trying to implement something that makes this process and makes um, this plugin more resi resilient against network failures is super interesting, but it's also, it's an additional quite big piece of work. If we can use an existing tool that does that for you, then I would lean heavily on that for now and then leave that additional work if we are bringing it into the plugin for a little bit later. Does that that seem like a good workflow for you? Or is it something yeah. that you were really excited to tackle? Okay, yeah. No, I mean, um, I feel like I am so, like I'm actually kind of excited at the prospect of including like Knative Broker inside yeah. of Jenkins, especially like Jenkins as a source or sync. And I think like, a, I don't know, it just really excites me when I feel that our system is going to be both um, implementing asynchronous the flow of sending events and receiving events, but also just yeah, it's going to be resistant to all, all transient failures and stuff like that. But it does make sense to, for now, um, like focus on just Jenkins is saying as is, and then when that's done, then we can think of implementing this has like an additional feature, yeah. you know, like collaborate with Knative Broker. <laughs> it is so cool. Yeah. Actually, 
this work that you showed just looks so awesome. I'm absolutely thrilled. And I, I, I love how much you're enjoying it too, you know? Yeah. So. Yes, this configuring this was so fun. <laughs> but like as I was saying, so um when I so there, you know, there obviously are different namespaces. And when like I was running some of these scripts, I did not know that some of them were actually like going to default namespace, just like so for example, if I have the Tekton um event listener, which is uh, which was listening on like CD events or Tekton CD events, then another part of Tekton, which was actually um the trigger, which was just on default namespace. So obviously they had to be like on the same, like inside the same namespace to make sure that like, they're working. So I was like, wait, why? So I, when I was like debugging, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. And the, the, the funniest part I think was when I was trying to implement Knative, you have no idea how many times I went through the same process of deleting the Knative namespace, implementing the Knative like eventing part, which is like the Knative core components and the Knative additional like CRD. So every time in running those kubectl apply, whatever, whatever, YAML files. And then it's it's always giving me the same that your MT channel, which is like the multi-tenant channel for K Native, the, the default. It's like that's i all of the pods are running except that. And I'm like, what is going? Like, I'm not sure what's going on. I I don't. And then I'm like debugging and I'm like looking at the logs and I'm still like, I don't see an error. I don't see any error inside of the logs. It's all info, no error, no warning. And then just for a reason, I just simply logged into AWS and I just like looked inside of my cluster just for, I had no idea. I was just like, maybe I'll just like try looking what's going on. And it's, it, it says you don't have enough CPU cores. And I was so, <laughs> so what? 12-ish hours just deleting and rerunning this same Knative event thing for two, to come to the conclusion that my CPU cores are not enough. I was running 16 cores, 16 Wii CPU cores, and they were still not enough. I'm so confused. <laughs> but it's all fine now. It's 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 working. That is good. Um yeah, I, yeah, I think it was it was quite fun implementing this. And next, I'm really looking forward to the opposite part of Jenkins being the sink and tucked on or captain being the source and also trying this out with captain as well. Um, because, because they, you know, we are developing this across a suite of tools or like for a variety of tools. So it'll be kind of fun to see how this is going to work with not just Tekton, but also Captain or whatever tools are can act or are using cloud events. So whenever we are writing documentation for this, we can provide more, you know, like detailed description of how someone can use this with um, other CI similar CI CD tools or common CI CD tools, I feel. Yeah, I think that's awesome. So I know we spoke a little bit before before the recording about, about writing things, but it would be really interesting to add as much of that as you could into the uh, Jenkins interoperability in the cloud post for the CDF newsletter, because that is very exciting. And you may or may not, I totally leave this up to you. I mean, it's your work and you can present it as you like. It might be nice to get some feedback too from the event SIG on that if, if they want to say anything or just kind of have input yeah two two additional things not to like load you up with uh communication work i i don't know if you've worked on the blog post for the midterm demos but we, we would love one and i'm so annoyed because on that zoom for the presentations one i had sound issues with you which was like Oh, because your your definition of interoperability was really great. And I'm like, mm. and and in addition, Zoom was doing a weird thing. I assumed it wouldn't record me when we were playing the videos, but it did, and or other people who, who made sounds. And I dislike strongly that the 
that face is on top of the you know the the recorded video and off <laughs> the speaker says i'm like oh that's awful so um we are posting up all the pre-recorded videos including yours that we have and i just need to figure out if we're going to put it in a cdf channel or we'll put it in the jink and one of the jenkins channels probably for gsoc and then you can link to that for your post if you are comfortable writing one we would love for you to write one for the jenkins blog and then when these are all up they'll probably be scooped up in some manner from the CDF um, and it referenced, you know, either in a blog post or, or in some way. And then there's the CDF newsletter. And then there's also DevOps World. We definitely want you to present. It'll be a lightning talk, but I, I sent around an email. I don't know if you saw the email. Uh, this DevOps World would like um, <coughs> lightning talks and it'll be shorter, but they want to do it soon. So it's kind of I don't know how different the presentations will be from the midterm demos, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter. But they want to record that soon. So if you, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, no, that, that all sounds really fun and exciting. And I'm really sorry the midterm blog took a bit. It was like I was planning on doing it earlier, but that week with like power cuts and everything, uh, don't even want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, it's really okay. annoying. Um, and in terms of the DevOps world um, presentation, yeah, I actually am also really excited about that. And um, I did saw, I like did see the email, and I feel like I might do another presentation with the new sort of POC that we have. I think that's cooler. <laughs> it's very cool. It's super cool. It's very very cool. And I've even, I've like had so much good feedback on your work from people who or just adjacent but not involved in this project and they're yeah it, it, your work is getting so much attention it's really cool i'm like oh, God, you're <laughs> amazing. it's such amazing. a good project that is so that is honestly like the, when you know when i was just starting earlier and we were now working alongside other tools it was interesting but at that point it, like you know unless you see something working with other other sort of systems because we are developing this essentially for you know interoperability between ci cd tools but uh like you all suggested such a great idea of doing this poc and um it just puts everything so much more in perspective and that's what i think really is. and also we have the first star on the repo <laughs> and i got so excited <laughs> So when I hopped on, actually I saw what many more stars. I was like, it's <laughs> great. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited for how people um, might end up using it. And yeah. um, in terms of feedback from the events community, do you think that since there another meeting is on August 16th, but the last Day you like the last day for submit submission you said is September twentieth or August twentieth the August twentieth August twentieth yeah, yeah we might have to um what maybe I can do is try the like the demo that we are doing for maybe um DevOps world I can try creating that and maybe like submitting that to the eventsic team so they can have a look at it and suggest additional feedback but i feel like i might want to do it after i also have kept in as a sync included just to like just to kind of you know demonstrate that it works with different systems so like people know that it's not actually like tightly coupled <laughs> um yeah i feel like we can create multiple subscriber uris inside of the inside of the trigger, I'm not sure. So let's see, I'm just gonna share. Like, you know, so if we have a single URI, so we have one single subscriber, maybe we can like, either create another subscriber which can be the captain or just create another trigger which is listening on different kind of attribute for um cloud events and then trigger captain but i feel like we'll have to see it how captain um 
works with this since you know since Tecton definitely had kind of a straightforward way if there's an event listener an event listener has a um trigger connected to it so so it kind of was just it's straightforward in that sense uh, but I haven't actually looked really into how Captain is included in this POC, <clears throat> but that I might do that next um, for like for the demonstration and then also submit it out to um, the event six team. Yeah, that would be really fantastic. Um, um, yeah, I might also create another sort of like an ingress for, so this was an ingress that I had to, or like I created for um, the the cloud events listener for Tecton, like the event listener for Tecton. So you know how we had the public subscriber URI instead of like a URI for um, the, the clusters. I might do something similar like that also for the cloud events broker, K native broker. So we can again like reach out, send in requests outside of the cluster. Yeah, those are those are like the few things that I'd like changing inside of the POC and see how fast we can accomplish that. Hopefully, it should be fast enough. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but if, that, if that doesn't happen, maybe we'll just like post the video with Tecton only, like Tecton and Jenkins. It still looks okay, so we can you know have um, Cloud Events Player or Sockeye and then Tecton for both the Event 16 and also for the CDF interoperability um, article and also Box World, or we can. See how far it gets by time. Uh, uh, and I like I did have one other question on. Um, so this is not really related to the plugin itself, but it's more about like licensing and also where should we put our you know if someone has any issues or any bugs or they would want to submit a request for a feature bug or anything, where should we put that for our plugin? Can they not raise an issue or make it on the on the actual repo for the plugin? Um yes, yes, they can. Um so we can like go that like only having raising you know like issues in the plugin it's on like the plugin repo itself or somewhere else because when i was reading hosting the plugin and also the readme like there were some places which had um jenkins jira and also other places oh. for use yeah yes i have a strong preference always for github but it's true that um jenkins has this whole system with jira <laughs> Um, so it's really, to some extent, up to you. I mean, the Jenkins Jira, I guess, makes sense for the Jenkins project. But I would imagine people will often jump on and raise issues on the GitHub. But I guess you should have information in the readme. Let me think about that, if we should stick to standard and use the Jenkins Jira. I mean, the thing I like about GitHub issues is it, it's a little bit more public. I think like anybody using the plugin is is likely to find those, whereas not everybody maybe knows where the the, the Jenkins Jira is. But in, in reality, um, you're probably going to get both. So, um, you, I mean, you can like suggest the way you want it in the readme and, and hopefully people will do that. But, um, you, you know, people will do whatever they're comfortable with anyway. Yeah, um, that's that's true. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was kind of a, well, you just go with how it is answer, but it, it's probably the most practical one. Yeah. Yeah, we, we might have, I, I am obviously, I feel like more comfortable using the GitHub repo because 
Um, like I have looked around Jenkins Jira and maybe like looked around how we can submit an issue or like a request or whatever, but I'm not really sure how it's going to tie up with the entire, like if someone raises an issue, do I have to like go and check every time or does it directly get pulled in from Jira into the, re I'm not sure. So I, I'll again have to look into that. Um, it's and once we have uh, Vipa, I think he has submitted a request for Jira. Um, and once we have the repo <clears throat> uh, like hosted, then maybe I'd, I'd know better on how people can go in and raise issues there because since I don't really know how it's going to look now, so I obviously right now I'm more comfortable with GitHub. Okay. Um, yeah, these need to be added to the Jenkins org. So when I was trying to push it out, it's been like quite quite some days in trying to um, get this release. But the, I think the first error was the maintainer when I did not have access. But then the other error was getting um, permissions for hosting. So I was not sure if it's an issue with you know Jira or is it some other issue. So I think um, Rudav is helping with that and he has requested for being added to the Jenkins org itself inside of GitHub. Hopefully yeah. that's going to work. Um, and uh, in, on licensing, I definitely see that the default is MIT or J or like GNU, but just your guys's opinion i think mit is is very good did you have a preference for a different license no no i was just <laughs> um i feel like you guys are more experienced on this than i yeah. do um so that's why i thought that it's appropriate to ask you first <laughs> yeah in, in the industry I, I think people like to see the mit license more um, it's just it it it's le it's it it's less restrict restricted than than some versions of the the other licenses. Not 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 all, but it's you know it, you it, it's it's just easy to know what you're getting. Yeah. yeah. So for licensing, that's I'll just edit inside of the um the the readme. Uh, and another thing was. I, the, the, the time we were trying to release this with the Vimpub, uh, I was really curious about vulnerability scanning for the plugin itself and all, you know, like all of the dependencies which are there. And I know that a lot of repos have that on there inside of like, maybe inside of their GitHub, but also inside of Jenkins if their vulnerability so you can go and check. So he mentioned that you might, uh, have more information about it. So if you guys, you know, can give me information on uh, just like vulnerabilities and other security issues inside of the plugin, and if there's additional, um, like anything that I can include in inside of our um, file, which does that for us. So the Jingans project has partnered with SNCC to do scanning on on the Jenkins project <laughs> and and a lot of its um, plugins so that would be what we would go with and I will um, just double check how to add that to the repo and stuff and make sure that that's appropriate for this but it that will likely be the the answer to your question and that's um, snake you mentioned yeah they are working with the Linux Foundation. They have a nice partnership with them for doing open source scanning for a lot of the Linux Foundation uh, open source projects. And uh, Jenkins has been involved in a lot of the discussions of this and might, yeah. So I think SNCC will, will be the way that we go forward with it. And I'll just, I'll, I'll just find out some info for you. But yes, it was a very good question. Really important. Well, it's very positive for the plugin to do scanning, and I think that sounds like a really good thought on your part. It's great that you're already thinking about that. 
Um, it will probably help adoption as well, but it, it in any case is the right thing to do. So <laughs> yeah, excellent. Yeah, I think it came more into like it has been my mind. I was like fascinated when like I'd go and see okay, vulnerabilities on the plugin, but also it became more um sort of like present inside of my mind <laughs> when when we were inside of, like when we were um the the when we were looking at all of the demos for the first phase and I was like, you know, we obviously when if we're talking about from like runtime security. And if we have like Jenkins running as a container, or whatever, there are tools for that. But but for you know, like there's um Falco and whatever stuff. But when we are referring to like the plugin itself and all like additional vulnerabilities inside of this single plugin. So, you know, like that last um and from like the Kubernetes um security operator that we were looking at, and there was like if this plugin has vulnerabilities, it's not going to install. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Okay, so we need to work on that. Um, so yes, that's why that has been sort of on my mind to make sure that we are complying with security issues as well, because that's obviously I think very important. Yeah, and I, I really like that in this GSOC year, I feel like all the GSOC projects really had that in their mind and were really thinking about it, which I think is one really impressive from the point of view of the students, really good for the Jenkins project as well. And then just really nice to see that becoming sort of um, an accepted top level concern, you know, I think that's, it was really excellent, so. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it was um, like actually really cool um, hearing issues because there were two or three different plugins, also the plugin, um, the spinnaker.io. There was like the runtime security for the containers which are going to be running and 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 then you know so i was just like well obviously we're not running an entire system or we're not running some like multiple sort of like containers as a part of the plugin but but still the plugin itself it can have different vulnerabilities from a dependency I'll check out Snake. Um, and those were, I think, um, my questions. I'm also just going to add the, the date. So I, I have that in mind that it's August 20th for the CDF um, here at the Bodhi. Um, um, do you um, know when is the, the date for? I know like the email mentioned that you might be putting the 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 videos from the demos for our first phase, but is there sort of a deadline for demos for the box world? I haven't actually been given the schedule, but what I was told is they needed all the, the all that bio info from all the GSOC students and abstracts, but so I was like, well, that, you know, we basically have it from the midterms and students can update that page as they wish. I, it's kind of hard because it's only a few weeks after the midterm demo. So I, uh, I thought, well, you know, like we had the abstracts would be quite similar. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's only so much work you can expect. You're doing fantastic, like zooming ahead, but there's only so much work you can realistically expect in a, in a, in a few short weeks. So I, I wouldn't expect what the GSOC students have to advance that much. But nonetheless, just updating that information. And then on that email chain, I put Alyssa Tong's email address. That's really the person who will have more additional information on how to sign up for um, the scheduling your recording. So they, what they would like to do from my understanding is they don't want you to do your own recording. They want you to actually sign up and do a live presentation, which is kind of fun. Um, although you can discuss it if you prefer to do a pre-recorded one, I'm sure there's some flexibility there. But I would respond and just ask, like, um, how do I sign up? Because I don't actually know how you all sign up for to I was just kidding yeah. the information. Although I can I can I guess I can pay my list and say, well, how how do they all sign up? Is it yeah, it, it's it's not my uh I, I'm not involved in organizing the conference. So. No, it's totally okay. And um, also, like, again, thank you for, for like, putting, pulling together such a great event for, for the demos and everything. That was absolutely, that was really fun and, and amazing. And um, yeah, 
thank you for doing everything that you do outside of like your work <laughs> you too so I think when I'm always like I don't know how that's sweet. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy with GSOC this year, um, especially especially your project, but uh, all of the projects are great. So it's really nice to sort of give as much of a platform for, for the uh, students and especially you to discuss your work <laughs> and celebrate it because it's, it's really amazing actually what's being done this year. So very excited. Any other questions you have for the work you're doing, but also so I was thinking what, what you were saying about AWS CPU cores. Again, I know you have these credits, but should you need additional AWS credits, we, we can get them for you. So I don't want you to ever be out of pocket, certainly, or to feel constrained by what resources you have. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I might have to take you up on that because I'm not, I'll have to like check on what I'm running at this point. Um, yeah, sometimes the charges will just sneak up on you. It's just I don't know where what my limit is running at this point, but I should check that. That's that's important. Um, yeah, I don't have um any more questions. Um, do you guys have any suggestions or feedback or anything that I should take care of or anything? Um, no, not nothing. Nothing specific, just keep up the good work. Thank you, Joe. Pretty much the same for me. The only, the only thing is, so I know you've been having additional meetings with Rubab, which is like fantastic. I'm super thrilled with that. I haven't been able to make it because the last couple of weeks have been crazy, but I hope to start being able to join. So generally you all are meeting on Wednesdays, is that right? Or, or whenever during the week? Yeah, we, um, it's, it's, it's not like we do meet every week. It's more like if, you know, if there's something that needs attention in terms of, so last week it was the release of the plugin. So we, um, like figured out, I think the weekend, which like worked for the both of us. And, uh, I think the week earlier too, I wasn't able to make it, but again, it's not like, uh, uh it ha it's like happening every week. It's more if something that needs attention and something that needs work we try and um like he he's like very generous in helping uh whenever you know, he's able to and so is everyone else <laughs> um but yeah he, he's very generous in helping with the release of the plugin um and again no no specific date really Okay. Okay. But yeah, just keep posting them in Slack and I'll probably start jumping on because I hopefully will have a little more bandwidth right now. But I just want to make sure you're getting all the advice and support that you need to from the mentors. But I, I like that everyone is, has been quite attentive. I think, I think there's a lot of interest in this project, a lot of excitement. So I'm glad that that's, you know, I'm glad that people are jumping on quite enthusiastically to, to give you support and help. Um, and the, um, the, the cloud native sick this or like the last week the, the Friday, I think that was really, really helpful. Um, you know, like hearing from ratio and what everyone has been working on and like in terms of the POC, I think that was really helpful. And I, if this is happening again, this Friday, I again, would love to I would love that too, because Marcia really has a lot of contacts and knowledge in this area. But it was it was on the cloud native sig meeting because he he's on vacation in Barcelona this week, <laughs> so he's like I can't do it on Monday. I have to have to Friday sounds good. So so that's why we moved it to then. But yes, I I think you know let, let's have him. <laughs> he's on vacation, but when he is back, it would be great to call him in more because I yeah it would be really great for him to see these latest advancements and and give some feedback on it. We'll do more sessions like that essentially. I mean, only only if again only if um he has time because you know vacations <laughs> are important and I seriously don't want to you know take away the time from vacationing. Um, you know, like communicating on Slack is also really fun. I just yeah. want to make sure that, like, vacations are not disturbed. <laughs> yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah, that's great. I don't have anything else to add and I'll get on working the three additional things in terms of like the blog and the video. Okay, great, awesome, good. All right, I will find out these pieces of information on just double checking about issues, but in all probability, it will be both just in practice. So good. I'm super excited. Hopefully we'll have more meetings this week. I'll jump on the ones if you're doing additional ones and really excited to see this progressing. Like awesome work. You. Yeah. Cool. Great. Okay. Good. Good meeting you all. And I will see you all later this week and certainly on Slack for sure. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.